Hello, my name is Kareem Khalifa, and today we'll be talking about truth tables. Here's the plan of attack for today. First, I'm going to show you how truth tables work. Then I'm going to show you how to use truth tables to evaluate whether a sentence is a tautology, a contradiction, or a contingency. Let's begin by discussing how truth tables work. The driving idea behind truth tables, the reason why they work, is because of the concept of truth functionality, which we mentioned in an earlier lecture. Truth functionality is basically the idea that for certain complex statements, their truth or falsity is derivative of the truth or falsity of the simpler statements that make them up. And this is true of all the Boolean connectives that we'll be looking at in the first part of the course. You may remember last time when I talked about truth functionality, I drew an analogy with cooking. Essentially, complex statements are like your finished dish. Simple propositions like A and B in this table here are like your raw ingredients. And then the simple rules for not, and, and or, and a few other Boolean connectives we'll learn about later are like your basic cooking techniques. Consequently, you're going to want to put these basic cooking techniques, as it were, to memory. You're just going to want to be automatic in knowing the truth tables for not, and, and or, so that you can do these more complex cooking techniques or logical operations that we're going to discuss today. So the most basic function of truth tables is telling us the conditions under which a complex statement is true and when it's false. Let's illustrate this with the following expression, either not A and B or B. The first thing we need to do is count the number of atomic sentences in this expression. As we can see, there are exactly two, A and B. Let's call this number N. Next thing we have to do is set up guide columns. These are basically the ingredients if we stick with that cooking analogy we talked about before. In this case, we have two atomic sentences, so we have two guide columns. We also need to figure out how many blank rows to insert underneath A and B. And we do this basically by taking two and raising it to the nth power, right? So in this case, we have two atomic sentences, so n equals two. So we take two to the second power, and that's four, and that's why you see four blanks underneath A and B. This means if we had three simple propositions, it would be two to the third power, or eight blanks underneath A, B, and C in this example. And obviously, if you had four, it would go up to 16, and if you had five, it would go up to 32, and so on and so forth. But we'll just stick with our, our initial example for now with just two simple propositions. The next step is to fill out the blanks underneath the guide columns. What we're doing here is going through all the different possible combinations of truth and falsity with A and B. And you do this with a very straightforward procedure. Let's start with A, since this is the leftmost column. What you're going to do there is make the top half all true and the bottom half all false. Whereas with the leftmost column, you made the top half all true and the bottom half all false, what you do in the next column is make the top quarter true, the next quarter false, the third quarter true, and the final quarter false. And you keep on doing this until you basically get true, false, true, false. Now, when you only have two atomic sentences, that first paragraph and that second paragraph in step four are one in the same maneuver. Okay? But when you have a more complex expression with, say, three or more atomic sentences, these aren't going to be the same steps. It's going to take a few more moves before you get the true, false, true, false, true, false going on. Uh, and so keep that in mind when we look at more complex problems. So look at what we've done here. We basically enumerated all the different ways that A and B can be true and false together. On the top row, they're both true. On the bottom row, they're both false. And in the middle, we have different combinations of truth and falsity. This leads to a crucial slogan, where there's a row, there's a way. And we'll get back to this in a bit. Now remember, our ultimate goal is to figure out the conditions under which this complex expression, which I've just added to that third column, is true and when it's false. So how do we do that? Give me a sec. Okay, so you insert that complex sentence you want to evaluate next to your guide columns. And then what you do is under each connective, you set up an individual column. So the last thing we need to do is fill out the remaining blanks in this truth table. We do this using those quote unquote basic cooking techniques that I talked about before. That is the ways of filling up the truth table for not and 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 or and so on and so forth. And this is very straightforward to do. Let me walk you through it. So essentially, you already know what you're going to put under all the columns with the atomic sentences, right? So we just match 
the truth value is in the leftmost guide column with all the instances of A in the complex proposition, as we've done here. And, unsurprisingly, we can do the same thing with B. So now we can start to build up from here. It's important when you do this that you know the order of operations. In this particular case, first we'll have to figure out the AND, then we'll have to figure out the NOT, and finally we'll have to figure out the OR. Once again, there are shortcuts. We're going to talk about those later. Okay, so let's start with A and B. We know that this is only true when both A is true and B is true, and we fill it out accordingly. And that's what we've done with those columns right there. Now what you're going to see is that we build on that. Basically, we take the column in red, which is capturing the truth values for A and B, and we negate that. So we just flip all the signs, because that's the basic cooking instruction or basic cooking technique for negation. Finally, we go to that OR, which is the main operator. This is basically telling us that that whole expression that we were trying to evaluate, these are the truth conditions for it. And we know that OR statements are only false when both of the components, both of the disjuncts, are also false. Right? And we see that that doesn't happen here, so this thing is always true. Remember the slogan where there's a row, there's a way. This tells us that there's no way for this statement to be false. Right? Every way it could be is true. And that's exactly what that orange column is telling us right now. This is called a tautology, so this will be the next thing that we talk about. But first, let's talk about some shortcuts. One way you can think about this is that you have half of the disjunction for the main operator already figured out when you're at this step. And furthermore, you know that whenever one disjunct is true, the whole disjunction is true. As a result, you can fill out two of these rows without even really doing any of the extra work just because you notice that B, which is one of the disjuncts, is already true. In other words, just by looking at that rightmost column, you know that the whole OR statement is going to be true, and so you can ignore what's going on on the other side of that disjunction. So that effectively cuts your work in half. You now only have to figure out those rows in which B is false, uh, and you save yourself a little bit of extra work. So as I noted, the previous example was a tautology. Let's discuss what that is. Tautologies are statements such that there is no way they can be false. Now recall, where there's a row, there's a way. Therefore, tautologies are statements such that there is no row on a truth table in which they are false. And that's exactly what we saw with our example. Tautologies can be contrasted with two other kinds of statements. The first we'll look at are what are called contradictions. Whereas tautologies are statements such that there is no way that they can be false, contradictions are statements such that there is no way that they can be true. So by parity of reasoning, contradictions are statements such that there is no row on a truth table in which they are true. The most straightforward contradiction is where you say A and not A. Let's make sure that we can use those truth table skills that we learned about earlier to prove that this is in fact a contradiction. First thing to notice is there's only one atomic proposition. As such, this is going to be a very simple truth table. We just have to look at cases where A is true and cases where A is false, and we can figure out the truth value of this more complex expression, A and not A. Furthermore, the expression has two connectives in it. It has a conjunction, or an AND, and it also has a negation. As such, we should set up columns under each of those connectives. So as before, we can just simply pop in the truth values for A based on our guide column. So we've already figured out the truth value for the left conjunct, A. It's going to be true on the top row and false on the bottom row. And it's just going to be the opposite for the second conjunct, not A. So here we see that wherever the left conjunct, A, is true, the right conjunct, not A, is false, and vice versa. And that corresponds to the two rows on the truth table. So we see that this whole thing a and not A can never be true, which is exactly the definition of a contradiction. Voila! Finally, in addition to tautologies and contradictions, there are also contingencies. While tautologies and contradictions always have the same truth value in every possible situation, contingencies are a little bit more nuanced. They're statements such that there's some way that they can be false and some way that they can be true. Now we know where there's a row, there's a way, 
So we know that contingencies are statements such that there's some row on a truth table in which they're false, and at least some rows in which they're true. As an example of a contingency, let's just modify this earlier example we worked with. Let's just lop off that disjunct at the end so that our complex proposition is simply not both A and B. As you can see, the top row states the one way in which this statement can be false, and that's when A and B are both true. Uh, the remaining cases basically show you the different ways in which the statement can be true. If only A is true, if only B is true, or if both are false. So, there's some row or some way in which the statement is false, and some rows or ways in which the statement is true. Consequently, it's a contingency. Oh yeah! So here's a quick recap. Truth tables provide a mechanical procedure for identifying the conditions in which complex statements are true and false, essentially based on the truth values of the atomic sentences that comprise them. We also saw that there are three kinds of statements. Tautologies are always true, contradictions are always false, and contingencies are sometimes true and sometimes false. As we also saw, there were easy procedures for ascertaining uh, whether a statement was a tautology or a contradiction or a contingency using the truth table. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next lesson.